make that. I bet there's nothing actually weird about Mrs. Lovett's meat pies. It's a shame she doesn't have any customers. We'll start by making the pie crusts. Grab a large bowl of flour and make sure to remove any tagalongs. And then use a smaller bowl filled with lard to create a well in the center. Add the lard along with some salt before pouring in boiling water straight from the kettle that may or may not have been used to kill Pirelli. The lard should melt as it warms up and gets mixed into the flour. Stir until crumbly and then add the rest of the boiling water. Continue to mix until a sticky dough begins to form and then use your hands to roll and knead the dough until it is smooth. Divide the dough into four balls and tear off a smaller portion from each that can be rolled into the lid of each pie crust. Let the dough rest under a damp cloth while making the filling. Grab a trusty frying pan to fry up some chopped fatty bacon until it releases most of its grease and then use that grease to saute potatoes, onions, and tomato paste. As the potatoes and onions soften, we could toss in sliced mushrooms, peas, and sweet corn before we add in our freshly ground meat that definitely wasn't sourced from the barbershop upstairs. Stir the meat into the veggies before scrounging up a couple of half-drank ales and a mug of red wine. Next, we'll toss in chopped spinach and then sprinkle flour over the surface of the pie filling. This will help the filling thicken up. Stir in a splash of bone broth, it doesn't matter what kind, and a bundle of herbs collected from the streets of London, including things like sage, marjoram, and rosemary. Let the filling simmer until thickened and the herbs have released their flavors into the meat. Remove the bundle of herbs before cooling the filling to room temperature. Next, we'll grab the hot water crust and roll out a lid for each pie. Then, using a meat mallet that may or may not have been used to crack a few skulls, shape a larger bowl of dough into a freestanding pie crust. Use your fingers and palms to work the dough up the sides of the mallet so that there is an empty space in the center and the edges are about two to three inches tall and about a quarter inch thick. Ironically, in the 1840s, you weren't supposed to eat the crust at all, so it didn't really matter what it looked like. Fill the crust to the top with the cooled meat filling and place on the lid before pinching the edges to seal it all together. Cut a small vent into the top of the pie and give it a generous brushing of egg wash. Then, Pop it into a giant furnace and cook until golden brown and warmed through. These meaty pies taste just like pork because that's definitely what's in the filling. They're rich and hearty and not greasy and gritty at all. Mrs. Lovett's meat pies went from the worst pies in London to the best pies in England. And all she had to do was source her meat locally. What fictional beast should I make next? Let me know in the comments below. If you liked this video, don't forget to flip that sub button and ring the dinner bell so you can be notified of my latest recipes and foodie adventures that I post every week. Do you ever get hungry? You can find this recipe and many more with ingredient amounts and step-by-step -step instructions over on the starvingchefblog.com. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next episode.